This is The Pulse. You're welcome back. And thousands of Ghanaians, well, that's you and me, are either blind or with some form of visual impairment. This is not a fair story, but I'll go through it because today is World Sight Day. And on The Pulse today, we put the spotlight on that disturbing situation in the country. We've been inviting, with, we have today in the studio an ophthalmologist, ophthalmetrist, uh, to help us understand what we can do to protect our eyes. But first, let's take a look at the data uh, from the Ghana Health Service on our video wall. So the Ghana Blindness and Visual Impairment Outlook, this is the 2021 figures. We have 227,920. That's a total number of Ghanaians that are blind. And uh, that's the figure. That's what it looks like. 227,920. Uh, total number of blind persons and then also uh, we have the related ailments uh, cornea related diseases 11.2 percent the post-segment diseases 12.3 percent glaucoma 19.4 uh, percent and cataract which is leading is 54.2 percent that's what it looks like when uh, causes of blindness and then the number of persons suffering from visual impairment 579,040. These are Ghanaians with moderate visual impairment and 329,560 Ghanaians with severe visual impairment. Uh, that's uh, the figures, number of persons suffering from visual impairment. And then with serious visual impairment, we have 300,000 persons, 300,000 persons in Ghana. And so that's how it looks like uh, when it comes to uh, issues about, uh, you know, eye when we, we talk about World Sight Day today. And Colin Sasmini is an optomet optometrist. Optometrist, he joins me mm -hmm. in the studio. I'll get my eye examined um, right. today on the pulse. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, Happy uh, World Sight Day. Yeah, thank you. How come you don't wear glasses? Well, I have one. I, <laughs> I, <laughs> my, my producer, uh, the director, everybody <laughs> is wearing glasses. They are, they are all blind I in like different your, ways. I like your frame, it's nice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. So, World Sight Day, what should we be pondering over on such a day, you say? Well, thank you. And uh, I think for today, it's more of awareness. And if you look at the messaging from the International Agency for the Prevention of Blindness, IAPB, it's more about rallying communities around eye care. Mm -hmm. So more like we putting out the message out there because uh, I'm sure we'll talk about it. Glaucoma yeah. is a silent thief of sight. And it's said that if you don't check, you don't know. Mm -hmm. So the awareness is more about at least once a year, go to your doctor or go to the eye clinic and have your eyes examined. And it looks like he's the leading. We'll get to it. But yeah. as um, a, an optometrist, you've, right. been, you know, you've seen a lot of eyes. Mm. I don't know how many eyeballs you've seen <laughs> in this year alone. But do you think that we are all taking care of our eyes as we ought to? Well, sadly not, um, because I think there are cultural reasons to, to it also. Um, a lot of people feel that if I don't know, it's fine. So instead of going to see the doctor, they would rather stay at home. And that for me is a problem. So we are more like talking to people, sensitizing the public that you may not feel anything, but just walk in and have your eyes examined. Hmm. Well, I don't know how many times you get your eyes examined, but uh, we'll get into uh, all the details that we put out. That um, Ghana Health Service statistics, very right. worrying. Uh, glaucoma is leading. We have cataracts and then we have the cornea and amongst others. But yeah. we'll get into the details shortly. But last weekend, Vision Spring held a free eye screening for residents of NEMA. That's right. uh, we'll be getting into uh, more of the conversation. Yeah. But first, take a look at this. As part of this year's World Sight Day, the International Agencies for the Prevention of Blindness, IAPB, launched a program to have 1.5 million eye screenings globally. Vision Spring, an active member of the IAPB, is committed to screening some 150,000 people across its eight countries of operations, including Ghana. One of the many screenings scheduled for the country came off at the Nima Government Hospital on Thursday. Majority of the people screened reported cases of ocular allergies, an itchy eye condition which makes affected persons rub their eyes excessively. Also reported were refracted errors, a common eye disorder which occurs when the eye cannot clearly focus on images. This usually results in blurred vision and causes visual impairment. 
Affected persons received on-site spectacle tests and were prescribed pop-in eyeglasses. The pop-in eyeglass is Vision Springs' novel product that is fitted on-site and provides instant solution to refractive errors. We have conducted a study among the tea pickers in Assam in India. And that study showed us that a pair of eyeglasses increases a worker's productivity by 22%. And that is a big number for someone earning, you know, less than $4 a day. Uh, for someone earning less than $4 a day, over two years of wearing eyeglasses, that translates to more than $200. So that is a huge in impact to someone's earning potential. And that's what we want to offer to this community at MIMA. Again, presbyopia. The gradual loss of the eye's ability to focus on nearby objects was reported among persons aged 40 and above. More than 40% of the participants needed reading glasses and they were prescribed for free. We have screened um, more than 45,000 screenings. We've distributed more than 50,000 glasses. Um, just uh, last week, we completed a uh, screening project in um, Ensawam. Uh, with the uh, Honorable Frank Domfrey, um, his constituency and with his partnership and we screened 700 people there. The screening exercise was conducted in collaboration with Total Vision with support from Alliance Insurance. The Chief Operations Officer for Vision Spring, Lina Palav, to join news, more communities have been earmarked for such screening exercises. What we want to do in Ghana is to continue some of these partnerships that we've built, like right here, NEMA, uh, we have Total Vision with us, uh, we have Allianz um, right here with us, um, then we've worked with Kokoshe. We want to build on these partnerships and really touch at least a million people more in the next two years. So that's um, details of that eye screening exercise. And today is World Side Day, just in case you didn't know, it's a good time to get your eye checked. And um, Colin Sasmini uh, is an optometrist. He's with me in the studio. And joining me via Zoom is also Dr. Jifa Bella of Fourier J. Hey. Uh, she's a consultant pediatric okay. ophthalmologist at the uh, Kolebu Teaching Hospital. And Colin is happy uh, that you're joining us. Okay. Dr. Jifa Bella, if you can hear me, I'm sure if you want to. Yes, I can hear you, MFA. Good afternoon to you good afternoon to Collins, and then to our cherished viewers good afternoon, good afternoon. and well site day to you as well i've been asking uh, Collins uh, what we should be pondering over uh, today as we celebrate world site today yes so uh, as he said rightly world site day is the second thursday that has been set aside certain second thursday in october that has been set aside by the IAPD, that's the International Agency for the Prevention of Blindness. And the main aim of this day is to create public awareness about visual impairment and then blindness, and to educate the public on the prevention of blindness. It was interesting, those statistics that you put out there. And the, the, the sad part is that all these causes are avoidable, preventable. Okay, except for glaucoma, all the other causes of blindness that we have currently are preventable. So the IAPB, the theme for this year is love your eyes. Anytime you love something, you cherish it, you take good care of it. And they looked at the four P's, the four P's of uh, how to love our eyes. The first one is it's prevention. Mm. So that you are supposed to prevent uh, uh, eye diseases from occurring. And we know that to be able to, uh, most of these eye diseases, like I, I said, are usually due to uh, avoidable causes. So living a healthy lifestyle, eating a balanced diet, a healthy lifestyle, we are saying that reduce your alcohol intake. Mm -hmm. If you're smoking, stop smoking. That's, that that affects your eye? Diet. That affects Say your again? eye? Alcohol yes. smoking affects your eye? Yes, it How? does. It Tell can me. cause optic atrophy. That's right. Okay, there's an optic nerve, which is a powerhouse of the eye. Okay, and in, when you take in a lot of alcohol, you have certain mineral deficiencies, and it can result in what we call nutritional opt optic uh, neuropathy. And that optic neuropathy is not curable. Once it occurs and you stop drinking, you can't bring the vision back. Okay, mm. so we're talking about eating a balanced diet, and but we know what we are talking about when we talk about balanced diet, especially vitamin A, 
Okay, we have our contumbre, we have our spinach, we have our vitamin C, oranges, tomatoes, and then our vitamin E, the avocados, and then the nuts, okay? And all these balanced diets helps you to be healthy. And once you are healthy, then you're not likely to get some of these diseases. And then we talk about protection of the eyes as well, protecting our eyes against harmful radiations. As soon as you step out of your house, you want to wear dark glasses when you are in the sun, okay? So you want to wear UV protected dark glasses to protect your eyes. And if you are a mechanic, a carpenter, a welder, and you're working, you want to wear protective goggles. Because we see lots of people coming to the hospital with eye injuries because he's a, 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 a carpenter and he's working and a piece of the wood gets into their eye. And it is the difference between blindness and having vision. Mm. There's a saying that the, of all the, the, the sights, uh, the, the senses that we have, the sight must be the most pleasurable one. Yeah. Imagine a tiny piece of wood changing your life in one day. And all you could have done was to wear protective glasses. And now in the era of um, COVID, where we are in, uh, encouraging physical distancing, most of our meetings are now virtual, isn't yeah. it? And with these virtual meetings, means that we are spending a lot of time behind the screens, okay? And with a lot of time behind, behind the screens, you are not blinking as much as you need to blink. Okay, it's causing dryness in the eye, it's causing pain in the eye. And our children who are having, are being homeschooled. Okay, so we want to encourage uh, children to play at least one to two hours outside, outdoors, to okay. protect the eye. Okay, mm. and also the radiation, the, the intensity, the glare from the screen, you want to reduce the screen. And then the next one we talk about is preserving your vision. So you've, you've prevented it. You've protected it. Now, how yeah, do you preserve, preserve what you We'll have? come to the okay. preservation shortly because um, we need to talk about uh, the statistics that we got from the Ghana Health Service also. It looks like, sure. it looks like glaucoma is leading there, followed by Actually, cataract. It's cataract, 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 cataract leading cataract. And, then and then glaucoma. glaucoma. Yeah. Super. We'll get into it. But uh, really, uh, you had a screening uh, for uh, people in NEMA, for instance. Yeah. Uh, what did you find in terms of your screening and interaction with these people? Well, um, what we realized was that uh, majority of the people um, were first time wearer of glasses. Um, what it means is that probably they were prescribed glasses in the past mm. and I mean, a lot of dynamics. Maybe they couldn't go for it. Maybe it was issue of cost. And so we found that almost 50% uh, of the people that turned up were wearing glasses for the first time. And majorly, we had a condition we call presbyopia, uh, which is what I would say a natural phenomenon. Once you hit age 40, it becomes difficult to see near print. Mm. And so when they came, um, we offered them reading glasses. But then it also tells us that people are not probably checking their eyes that much and that somebody has to get to, a part, let's say, 50 years before they get to know that they need glasses. Mm. Yeah, that was one of the things that we found out. There are other conditions like allergies, which mm. I would say is a normal condition because of the environment and all that. And then we also found cataract and glaucoma also. Okay. Well, interesting then, uh, concerning this kind of screening and people participating in it, uh, yeah. for instance, um, is it always a difficulty getting people to come out and get their eyes screened? Well, I would say that the trend is changing. Okay. Because we had close to 500 people within just a space of between 8 a.m. and 4 p.m. Mm -hmm. And we even had to turn some people away. Mm -hmm. So I see that generally when it comes to screenings, there is this interest that is building. But I see the interest more in places where they don't have ready access to eye care. Mm -hmm. I think the whole of NEMA, there's no eye clinic that is providing them the service. And so they saw this as a very um, important exercise for them mm -hmm. to have their eyes examined. So for you, you think that people are taking their eyes more serious than previously? I would say so. Okay, interesting. Doc, but this issue also about um, preservation, I think we can get into preservation at this point that we can talk about uh, the diseases that are leading in terms of eyes. I am short-sighted. I've declared my, uh, <laughs> my assets right here. But let's talk about preservation. You've talked about how we can protect amongst others. So you have to unmute, Doc. So in preservation, we're actually talking about planning for and then getting regular eye checkup. 
So sometimes people just go and change their glasses. So nearsighted people like you go to the clinic and all they do is check their glasses and mm -hmm. leave. We want you to have a comprehensive eye check. So you, you check your glasses, we look at your eye, and then we look at the back of your eye, which contains the optic nerve, which is affected when you have glaucoma. So we're talking about comprehensive eye screening. And then we are saying that prioritize your, 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 your eyes. Okay, when you go for annual medical checkup, make sure that you're wow. doing eye screening as well. And importantly for children, okay, some children don't know they have poor vision. Okay, most of the children, because they're not able to articulate their needs, like Colin said, presbyopia is for the aged, and for children, some of them may have refractive error, right. and it may be the only reason why they are performing badly in school, mm -hmm. or the only reason why they are inattentive in school, and it's because they cannot see, and they are being branded as not being intelligent, and all they need is a pair of glasses. So if we are prioritizing eye screening, we are screening our eyes and that of our children. This year it says that, love your eyes, and it says everybody counts, everybody including children. When you're going to check your eyes, you go along with your child. You screen your child's eye as well. Because the leading cause of visual impairment in children is uncorrected refractive error. Meaning that there are children who don't see properly. They see fuzzy. But interestingly, they think that is how we all see because they don't know any better. Yeah. It's only a few of them that can actually notice that their vision is not right. Okay. So screening. Screening is very important. Yeah. But what are the basic signs, for instance, to look out for when you have children with you, at least? What are the basic things you can start doing at home uh, for you to know that that child needs help? Yes. So a few of the signs that children will have, okay? One of them is what we call the squints. So a child who squints, in our local parlance, we call it a look me, a look landing, okay? Mm -hmm. So one eye is straight and the other eye is deviated. Yeah. When a child has that, it means that there's something wrong with the eye. The eye communicates with the brain. The brain holds the eye straight. And both of our, both of us now, our eyes are straight, is because, and it's because the eye is communicating to the brain. Anytime your eye is deviated, it means your eye is not communicating to the brain. And there may be several reasons why that is happening. For most children, it may happen in one eye, so the other eye is good. So they go about their daily activities. They don't have any pain. They don't complain. So parents see it as a cosmetic problem, not a visual problem, okay? And some children may also present with a spot in their eye. So this cataract that we're saying is the leading cause of avoidable blindness. You can have cataracts in children too. And okay. when that happens, they are not able to see. If it is in both eyes, you will notice it because the child will not, may not walk. But if it's in one eye, then the child will be using the other eye. Occasionally, some children too will hold books very close to their faces when they are reading, okay? And that will tell you that there's a problem with the child. The American Academy of Pediatric Ophthalmology and Strabismus advises that when a child is born, the eyes must be screened at birth, must be screened before the first year of age, and must be screened before going to school. But are we so doing that? We, Do we have people doing that? We, we are not doing that. Mm. We are not doing that, especially before school. I have personally had to see children who are about 12 years of age who cannot see at all, okay? And you put the glasses in their eyes and the, the, on their eyes and they marvel. Yeah. Is this how the doll looks? Is this how this looks? They are amazed. And these children don't put down their glasses because they began to appreciate life for what it is. And then the parents get worried. They say the child is dependent on the glasses. Mm. A child is not dependent on the glasses. Everybody likes good things. So if you can see well with the glasses, there's no way that child is going to put the glasses away. And that also is another problem because then there's a misnomer that if you wear glasses, your eyes get sunken, okay? Mm -hmm. So the parents will prevent the children from wearing the glasses because they think the children are dependent on the glasses, yeah. which they are not. They are just happy with the new vision that they have. So you will notice that some children only take off their glasses when they, they are going to bed. And the parents must leave them to do that because they see better with the glasses. Mm. Remember, for you say you're nearsighted. So you can imagine what it means for a child who is being forced to put the glasses down because mom thinks that the child is dependent on glasses. So those are some of the things that can help you notice that your child has a problem. Okay. Another emerging problem with children we are having now is retinopathy of prematurity. A lot of our preterms are surviving. And with their high survival comes issues with the immature eye. So anyone who has a preterm baby must screen that child within the first month of the child's life. 
Otherwise, it can lead to permanent blindness. And in this COVID era, where we had a few breaks in our screening of preterm children, we had few children who went completely blind from an avoidable cause, such as retinopathy of prematurity. Okay. So these children are not born blind. They are just born early. So we need to screen them. Okay. Is it okay, uh, Collins, that I can wear my glasses yeah. every day? Because um, it's surprising that I'm hearing that we should allow the children yeah. uh, to wear them. They only take it off um, yeah. when they're going to bed. Is it okay that we wear it for yeah. that long period of time? Yeah. In fact, we encourage full-time wear. Okay. Um, for you to derive the, the best benefit from glasses, you must wear it full time. Does it correct it? Or well, what exactly the, does it the way glasses work is that as far as it's on, on, it's on your eyes, you are good. Hmm. When you put it down, you are back to your old self. Okay. Because um, nature is also at play. Some people are born with longer eyeballs. Some have shorter eyeballs. They all have, I would say, a consequence on how you see. Hmm. So people who are myopes, like yourself, most of them may have longer eyeballs. And it's something that we cannot use, use glasses to correct it. But the glasses is only helping you so far as you put it on. Mm. If you put it down, you are back to your old self. Okay. And that's something that sometimes creates some misconception. People feel that there's some medicine in the glasses. As I wear it, it goes into my eye and then with time. Exactly, because that's what I thought. But yeah, like going it, for glasses, I was told <laughs> that uh, when you wear it for a period, I've been wearing it since I was 16 or yeah, so, yeah. that at, at some point in time, I would have to stop wearing the glasses yeah. because it will correct my eye. No, so far, it's not true. It, it corrects when it's on, on your eye. Only when it's on. Yeah, only when it's so on. So I'll wear it for the rest of my life. Um, uh, I'm afraid, yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. But one thing that I wanted to add is that, I mean, I don't think when I was three years, I was using... Um, iPad or anything, but now the trend is changing. Yes. You have two-year-olds using iPads and all that. And there's a research coming up, I don't know, I'm sure Dr. Um, Gifa will speak to it, where it's been found out that the more we are doing near work and ignoring far activity, that is also a cause of myopia or short-sightedness. Okay. And so that's why um, we are encouraging that kids should spend some time outside. The more you are engaging yourself in the outside activity, it excites the brain and chances are that you will not have um, myopia. Okay. Well, is there certain kinds of food? Are there any uh, food that we should avoid uh, so that we can be able to take care of our eyes? Is there, because I've, told, I've been told that alcohol and mm. then we need to eat balanced diets and mm. all that. Mm. But some have said when we're young, we're told that if you eat too much Gary, me, my father told me that I ate too much guy. That's how come I have ended up wearing glasses. Is, right. is it true? That is also a misconception. I mean, there's, there's no correlation between high carbohydrate and refractive error. Mm -hmm. uh, we also told the same thing, mm -hmm. but when we learned the science, we realized that there's no correlation. What we know is that there are types of food that can help um, give you healthy eyes. I mm -hmm. mean, um, we have all the greens, the vegetables, the fruits, um, and Dr. Um, uh, Ajifa mentioned uh, Kotomri, all of th those types of foods help um, really. Carrots are a very good source of uh, um, nutrients that help the eye. Yeah. Okay. Well, Dr. Ajifa, well, I'm sure you would, you would want to add some more to it. There's misconceptions about uh, the high carbs, high starch that affects your eyes and the kinds of food in particular that you need to have more intake of to be able to help your eyes. Basically, like I said, a balanced diet, okay? So these high carbohydrates, they are indirectly affecting your eyes because say if you're taking high carbohydrates or if you develop, say, obesity or you develop diabetes from that, okay? Then the sequelae of the diabetes is the eye problem. Or let's say you develop, a, you have a lot of cholesterol, then the sequelae of the high cholesterol is what is going to affect your eyes. So basically, a balanced diet is very important. Once you eat a balanced diet, then your eyes will be healthy, your body will be healthy, and then your eyes will be healthy. One of the examples I give my, my patients' uh, parents about glasses, when you said that you felt that it would yes. kill your eyes, I, I said to them that you wear high heels, you are short, and when you take off the heels, you go back to your height, right? But when you wear it, you feel very good, and it's the same thing. So once you wear the glasses, you look, you can see everything clearly, but you take it off, then you can't see. And the problem in children is that children usually are not born with excellent eyesight. Mm. The more they see, 
the better their vision. Okay, so when you have a baby who was born today, their eyesight on day one is different from their eyesight at six months. Okay. So the more you see clearly, the better your eye develops. So imagine that child who is nearsighted and is not wearing glasses and is seeing blurry. For the rest of that child's life, the brain will understand that everything in life is blurry. Mm. And we say children become visual adults at the age of eight years. So if you don't correct this refractive error before eight years, you put on the glasses, but you still won't see. So if okay. I imagine your eye without the glasses mm -hmm. and with the glasses, and I'm saying that if you prevent children from wearing glasses or you prevent them from having good eyesight before a certain age, they develop amblyopia. Their vision will remain bad for the rest of their lives. So for me, it is important that parents understand that when your child needs glasses, like he said, full-time glasses wear. If it is not full-time glasses wear, in certain circumstances, you'll be told. But by and large, for majority of them, you need full-time glasses wear. Okay. And this, this week, uh, Ophthalmological Society of Ghana has been in Cape Coast uh, doing a lot of cataract surgery. So at the Cape Coast Teaching Hospital, we partnered with the Himalayan Cataract pro uh, uh, Project, and uh, we screened over 500 patients and over 200 surgeries have been done so far in commemoration of the World Sight Day. You saw that cataract was a leading cause of blindness. Yeah. And it's preventable. Okay, there's a video where the first day after the cataract surgery, patients walked, were helped into the facility because they couldn't see. First day after the surgery, the plaster is taken off their eyes and then they are seeing and they are excited because mm -hmm. this mother who couldn't work can now start working. This mom who couldn't go to the farm can go back to farm. And in that way, you are improving the life of the, the caregiver and the children are going to have a good life. Yes. But what causes it? Cataract, let's get into well, it. Cataract, they are, mainly is age related. Mm. So basically you and I, when we clock 50 plus, we are going to start developing cataracts, okay? Mm. In children, some children may be born with cataract. That is called congenital cataract. But cataract is age related. If you live long enough, you will develop cataract. There are certain disease conditions that will let you, make you predisposed to developing cataracts early. One of them is diabetes. So if you have diabetes and your sugars are not well controlled, then you, are, you have a tendency to develop cataracts early. And there okay. are certain patients who have certain diseases that we put them on what we call steroids. And that steroid can also trigger cataracts early. And that is why we advise against buying over-the-counter drugs because some of these medications contain steroids. You buy them and you continuously put them in your eye. And within a short period of time, you see a 35-year-old man developing a cataract. So cataracts, by and large, the greater percentage of it is age-related. Okay, Collins, is there a way that uh, we can actually, uh, we know it's age-related, but is there anything you can do uh, to minimize you getting it, or is there anything like that? Well, it's difficult. My, my mm. dad had cataracts. I wish he didn't have it, but I would say uh, it's age-related. And so okay. the more uh, he grew, he had you it. You definitely and so get it. had to undergo surgery. Um, but what can be avoided, I would say, is the one caused by trauma. Mm. So we advise that, I mean, kids, you know, kids who, who play outside can get hit by the body you're playing. I mean, very, um, we'll call it blunt trauma. Mm -hmm. And that can result in cataract. Okay. Yeah, so cataract can come as a result of trauma. Mm -hmm. And that is what I would say is avoidable. Okay. So maybe parents will have to be on the lookout. And then uh, people who want to engage in, even contact sports sometimes, mm -hmm. um, play, playing lawn tennis and all that, if you are hit in the eye, that can cause cataract. Okay, so um, we've talked about trauma then. Are there any other signs that we need to look out for, uh, for you to know that this is cataract or this is glaucoma? Uh, maybe we, just, we should just finish with cataract, then we can go into the other ones. Are there any signs that you display when you have uh, cataract? Or is just that so it just comes, you don't see anything? So cataract, usually you see a white pupil. So when you look into someone's eye, there's a little hole in the eye that looks black. And in cataract, that hole becomes white. So they'll see a white spot in the eye. Mm. That is in the advanced cases. Now, in the early stages, it may just present with poor vision. So your vision is reduced. And early stages, most of the time, glasses would help. So when you do refraction, okay, and you're putting glasses, your vision gets better. 
So poor vision is one of them. And then the white spots that you see in the eye. And then the patients will say that the, the, the thing looks cloudy. When they are looking at things, it looks cloudy. So that is one of the things that you can know that you have cataracts. But okay. the good news about cataracts is that it is once you get it, we do the surgery and then you can see. Is it a so painful exercise? Is, not so bad. is it painful? Say again. The surgery, is it painful? It's usually <laughs> done under anesthesia. Okay. So you won't feel the pain. So usually the same way when you go to a dentist, you know, they give you the numbing injection before they do the extraction of your tooth. So okay. it's a similar injection that we give under the eye. And then within 30 minutes, you are up. And then the following day, voila, you can see. You can, you're good. Okay, so um, I see um, others also asking, Collins, for instance, that if I am I'm wearing glasses right. and um, I give birth, mm. is it automatic that uh, my children will also have to wear glasses? Because I have a girl, she's wearing glasses. My son is not. Right. Is it that I should wait, my son will also be wearing very soon? Is it genetic? I yeah, can we, always have, we, we have found that um, refractive errors can be inherited, and particularly mm. in the case of myopia. In fact, we went to do some screening in Sawam um, somewhere two weeks ago, and a family of four all wear glasses. <laughs> I mean, it's interesting <laughs> that the mother and three daughters all wear glasses. And so you would find that that um, can happen, especially in the case of myopia. Okay. Yeah. So, Doc, uh, once I'm pregnant, was there anything I could have done to prevent my children getting it? Like I said, my girl has it, my boy doesn't right now, at least. Uh, maybe we haven't checked. But is there a way that I can prevent it once I'm pregnant so that they don't get Not it? Not really, MFA. <laughs> MFA, I'm sure your, your daughter has your nice skin, right? So she took lots of the things, including why, the... Why, why, the, why the myopic? Okay. Why did she take that one? <laughs> I'm sure she took other things as well. She okay. took other awesome things as well. But you see, the good news about being myopic is once you're wearing your glasses, you are as good as those of us not wearing glasses, okay? Yeah. So with the glasses, your vision is perfect. We worry when you wear your glasses and your vision is not perfect. Okay. And that is where I say that in children who don't wear their glasses early, that can happen. They can develop amblyopia, whereby even when they wear their glasses, they can't see properly. So mm -hmm. just imagine yourself in high heels the next time you worry about it. <laughs> you wear the, you look tall, you are happy. She wears the glasses, she sees she's on top of the world. Mm -hmm. She can achieve anything with the glasses. So wearing glasses in itself or being myopic in itself is not a problem. Okay. okay. So long as you're in your glasses, you are okay. Mm. Well, and then also, um, uh, my producers are asking that if you have cataracts, can you also get glaucoma? Can you get all the eye diseases at the same time? Is there a combination that always comes? Or so cataracts okay. and glaucoma are completely different. Mm. So glaucoma happens in the middle of the... Sorry, cataract happens in the middle of the eye and glaucoma happens at the back of the eye. So glaucoma affects the powerhouse of the eye. The eyeball is connected to the brain through a cord, okay? And that cord sends all the impulses to the brain. So in glaucoma, that cord gets damaged. So the eyeball may be fine, the brain will be fine, but the transmission, once it is damaged, then you have issues. So I, you liken it to having a, a new television set, okay? You need to connect it to the powerhouse to be able to get electricity, okay? okay? So if the, between the, 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 the TV set and the Akosobo dam that is producing the electricity, there's a plug between it. That is the cord for the glaucoma. The TV set may be new. If you don't connect it to the power, you will not see. In this case, the Akosobo dam. So if you don't... Uh, if you have glaucoma, everything about your eye can be fine. Just that cord, that gets damaged. And that is what will bring the poor vision. And unfortunately for us, glaucoma is irreversible. The vision, poor vision in glaucoma is irreversible. So glaucoma is actually the leading cause of irreversible blindness. The okay. same way cataract is the leading cause of reversible blindness. Mm. The issue with glaucoma is it doesn't give you any signs at all. So it starts, we call it the silent thief of sight because it starts from your periphery. So your central vision, which is what you're look, using to look at me now, will be perfect. It will encroach from the periphery and by the time it is advanced, it will affect your, your central vision. And that is the stage where most people would notice that something is going wrong. Yeah. And that time is too late. too late. So for glaucoma, we're saying that get your eye checked. Anytime you go to the hospital, your blood pressure is taken, whether or not you are hypertensive. This is to tell you that 
you are hypertensive or you are prehypertensive or not. Okay. In the same way for glaucoma, when you visit your eye doctor, your ophthalmologist will check the pressure in your eye. And that is what will tell the, the, the doctor to, be, to get worried or not. Okay. And then they'll look at the back of your eye as well. And then they'll be able to tell whether you are at risk of developing glaucoma or whether you have glaucoma or not. Mm. So the only way to prevent this irreversible blindness is through screening. Okay. Well, uh, colleagues, there are those who don't like the glasses, but mm. yeah, they admit that they need to correct it. Mm. Lenses, we wear contact lenses sometimes. Right. Does it have any effect? Is it okay uh, to offer contact lenses and how long can, well, you, can you keep on wearing it? Well, I would say contact lenses have been around for some time. They are in vogue, um, but it comes with its own issues. Mm. And so doctors would normally do an assessment. In fact, our, my lecturer told me that if you walk into his office and he saw that your nails were not well kept, <laughs> that just... Um, it disqualifies you from wearing, from wearing contacts because the point is that you, it can easily get infected and um, you know when it's infected there's bacteria I mean it's one of the leading causes of um, visual impairment in the, in the United States so people who wear um, um, contact lenses and have some infection it can really because it has you know it's put on the cornea mm -hmm. and the cornea is the most sensitive part of the body and so that can have a lot of issues, but so many people are wearing contacts. Yes. We would encourage people to wear them, um, and uh, it looks like ladies do well yes. with contacts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So for me, I, I would encourage. But that is scary. Yeah. Well, doc, we should be wrapping up. Maybe a word or two also on contacts. Um, uh, sometimes you want to drop the glasses and then just put on contacts, so it will be like you as well. Is it okay? So yeah, so just like he said, apart from the, the cost implications is one of them. So there are some of them that are not for long-term use, but because people can't afford them, they tend to wear them for long-term use. If you don't get an infection, you'll be fine. But when you get an infection, it is very difficult to treat. Mm. And if you don't treat the, or if the infection becomes severe, you get cloudiness in your cornea and you may need a cornea transplant. So by all means, you can wear contact lenses. There are some children that you don't have a choice. They have to wear the contact lenses. Okay. But when you have a choice and you are wearing contact lenses, you should make sure that you are as clean as possible. You are abiding by the rules of the contact lenses. If you're supposed to wear it for a week, you make sure you wear it for a week. If it's a daily use, you wear it for daily use. Okay. In this way, you can't do economics. So if, if, it's a monthly, to... if it's a monthly use, for instance, you have to keep it on the whole month or you have to take it off every day? So if you take it off, there's solution that you put okay. it inside. It comes with all its regulations. And like he said, you need to wash your hands before you wear them. The only problem with contact lens is because when there is an infection, it's very difficult to treat. Okay, because of the kind of bacteria that causes the infection. Otherwise, contact lens is actually not a problem at all. Okay. So in the Western world, where they, they get the contact lens on insurance, there's no problem of wearing a, a day's contact lens for a week because you have tons of it. Okay? okay, so you don't tend to have issues like that. But in our setting where the cost is prohibitive as well, you should adhere to the regulations because if you do get an infection, it may be potentially blinded. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Dr. Jifa Bella Ufereje, uh, she's a consultant pediatric ophthalmologist at the Kowalebu Teaching Hospital. Uh, Dr. Collins Asumini, an optometrist also uh, in the studios with me. Maybe quickly, my eyes, are they good? <laughs> yeah, they look good. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. And that's it uh, for this uh, particular segment. It's World Sight Day. Ought to take care of your eyes. Love your eyes. They are all that you have. And we'll take a quick break here on The Pulse. We'll be right back. Right. Thank you.